Okay, welcome to the lesson on fractions. I am going to have a series of five videos that is focusing on fractions. Uh, this video is sort of introducing you to fractions. Then I will have two videos of adding and subtracting fractions. I will have one video on multiplying fractions and the last one dividing fractions. So let's get started with the intro. So a fraction, a fraction has a numerator over the denominator. Now, this is very important, especially understanding the denominator when we add and subtract fractions later on in my series of fractions. So there are three forms, and I will write these down, that we typically use with fractions. One is proper fractions. Two is improper fractions. And the last is a mixed number. So let me define what each are, and then I'm going to give you some examples from them. So a proper fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the top as the N and the bottom as the D. It's the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so a proper fraction, the numerator is what we call less than the denominator, meaning the number on the top is less than the number on the bottom. So for an example... And you can pick as many as these as you want. I'm going to use three-fourths as my example. Now, notice three is smaller than four. This is called a proper fraction. Now, an improper fraction is when the numerator is greater than the denominator. And for example, all I'm going to do now on this example is I'm going to make this 4 over 3. And finally, a mixed number is where, and I'm going to do several of these examples in a little bit, but a mixed number is when you have something like 1 and 1 third. So let's take a look at a lot of proper fractions. So we get a yeah. on these. So proper fraction, I'm going to list several. Proper fractions. Okay, now, these could be one-half, maybe two-thirds, maybe even five over ten. And maybe 20 over 100. Now, when we're dealing with fractions, we also want to simplify them. So you may, we may want to simplify fractions. So on the first one, this is as far as we can get. Same thing with the second one. 
two thirds, or you cannot reduce it. That's another terminology in fractions that we say simplify or to reduce. Five ten. So five over ten can reduce to. Think about this. I mean, what what number do they have in common? Five. Five goes into five one time. Five goes into ten two times. Now, a cool little trick I'm going to show you on this one is when you have your zeros right here, I'm going to cancel the zero out. And then that is 2 over 10. 2 over 10 reduces to or simplifies to 1 over 5. So that's some ideas on proper fractions. Now, the second classification that I'm talking about is improper fractions. Now, I'm going to give us some examples of improper fractions. Now, let's have, uh, why don't we start with maybe 5 over 4, maybe 23 over 7. We could even have a negative fraction. We can have maybe a negative 10 over 3. Now, on these, we cannot simplify them anymore. But what about if we had something like 20 over 15 and maybe negative... Maybe we'll say negative 28 over 21. Now, when we're dealing with fractions like this, we want to think in our mind, what can we reduce them if we can? Well, 20 and 15, 5 goes into... 20, four times, five goes into 15, three times. <laughs> now notice by me uh, reducing this, it's still the top number is greater than the bottom number, or the numerator is greater than the denominator. Let's take a look at the next one. We have a negative, so it's going to be negative, 7 goes into that 4 times, and 7 goes into 21 3 times. That's how we can reduce improper fractions. Now, mixed numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my examples from improper fractions, and I'm going to change them into what we call mixed numbers. Five over four. Now, and, I, and, we'll, and we'll do 23 over seven. And then I will finish up with the negative 10 over Three, because this is one that will typically get us confused a little bit, okay? Now, when we start to change this into mixed numbers, we need to figure out, okay, four goes into five. Well, I'm going to do some math over here to the side. That means how many times 4 goes into 5? Well, it's 1, so my whole number is a 1. And then if we do our division, we subtract. 1 times 4 is 4, so we subtract it. This is our remainder, which goes on top. And what we're dividing by, or our denominator, stays on the bottom. Now, this is, would be our answer... Now, how can we check it? 
Well, to check it, to check to see if we're right, what we're going to do is we're going to take we're going to take our four times one, and then add it to the top. So to check this, four times one is four plus the top one is five. We keep the denominator the same. That is our original part. So we can always check this as well. Now let's take a look at seven into 23. So on this improper fraction, how many times, and I'll do this from the side too, how many times does seven go into 23? Well, most of us know that 7 times 3 is 21. That means we're going to have a 2 of remainder. So that means that the 3 right here is the whole number. The remainder goes on top, and the 7 stays the same. That's our denominator. Now, to check this one, We can say, and I'm going to write this to the side right here. We're going to say 7 times 3 is 21. Add the 2 on the top, and you get 23 over 7. And finally, this negative 10 over 3. Well, I'm going to just go ahead and make this less confusing. If you see one negative sign, that means the fraction, or this case, the mixed number, is going to be negative. So that means what we need to do is say, how many times does 3 go into 10? Well, in this case, 3 goes into 10 three times with a remainder of 1. So that would be, this is our whole number, the, the 3, the one right here is our numerator, and our denominator is what we're dividing it by. Now, here's where when we would check this, that this is confusing. So what I'm going to do is, since it is negative, I'm going to just say that's negative, and then I'm going to do my three times, and then add the top. Three times three is nine, plus one is 10. So that's 10 over 3, and since it's negative, it checks out. This is where the confusion comes from. So the checking part is showing you how to go from a mixed number to an improper fraction. Now, <clears throat> and we've already gone over a few of these in my checking uh, parts of this, but to see this a little bit more clearly, And I'll go over just a couple more examples, and then, and then this will conclude my introduction. <coughs> but, so let's just say we had let's do 7 and maybe 3 fourths. Then we'll do maybe negative 5 and 2 thirds. Now, what, this, what we're going to do is we're going to take the 4 times the 7, which is 28, and then we're going to add it to the top of 3 and put it over our denominator. So then you add this up, 31 over 4.
The next one, since it is negative, I would just pull the negative out because if not, we try to subtract the top, we'll make that five a negative. So to do this confusion, the, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I wanna bring the negative out and I wanna say five and two thirds. I'm gonna multiply the three times the five, which is 15. I'm gonna add it to the top. I'm gonna put it over three and I'm, I'm gonna realize that this right here, it is negative. So if we add the top up, it'll be negative 17 over three. And on this one, I'm gonna check my answer just to show you again how we can check this. So to check it, negative 17 over three, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the negative, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna say, okay, how many times does three go into 17? Well, I know three times five is 15. That leaves me a remainder of two. So the top is five. The remainder goes on top, and what we're dividing it by goes on the bottom. And notice this is the same as what we started off with. So this kind of gives us a little idea of fractions. So be looking at, out for my adding and subtracting fractions. I'll have two different videos as well as multiplying and dividing fractions. Thank you for listening.